throughout Ash's journey to be the greatest to ever do it. He's faced many trainers that have pushed him to the limit. <laughs> Battles that have had us screaming because they were so hyped. Now let's find out who are Ash Ketchum's top three greatest rivals. Before we get into the top three, let's lay down the criteria for what his best rivals need to fulfill. Because as I say, this is an opinion based, this is facts. I am about to cook. How intense are the battles? A great rival must have extremely hype battles. I'm talking explosions, mega evolutions, or endings that could go either way. How close is this trainer with Ash? A great rival must have Ash and us feeling some type of way anytime they're on screen. Either we're extremely excited to see the trainer or hate them with every fiber of our being. The rivalry between their Pokemon. Not a lot of people talk about this when discussing great rivals, but how do the trainers Pokemon feel every time they're face to face? Is it truly smoke on sight? When Sawyer was a wee chap, he went to Professor Birch to get his starter. Unfortunately, he skipped over Mudkip and chose Trico. This should be a crime, but uh, I'm gonna let him rock. Both Sawyer and Trico were unexperienced trainers, struggling to fight wild Pokemon. Humble beginnings. After taking the L, bro got to work and started to document his mistakes in battle. After meeting my GOAT Steven Stone and finding out that his Trico can mega evolve, Sawyer makes his way to Kalos to try the greatest gimmick in all of Pokemon out for himself. After getting to Kalos, this guy really decided to challenge a whole gym leader with his level 10 Trico and surprisingly took the W. Psych! Are you crazy? Bro got worked. Sawyer didn't learn his lesson because shortly after he goes to challenge another gym. But after taking a look at his sorry ass Trico, they dubbed him with the quickness. On his way out, he bumps into Ash. And after finding out all of the badges Ash has, the rival's fire was lit. Now that we know who Sawyer is, let's take a look at his battles with Ash. Their first encounter was a doubles battle. Ash's Frogadier and Halucha versus Sawyer's Trico and Bagon. Oh my god! Sawyer has got some heat! For those new to the channel, I absolutely we love Hoenn and its Pokemon. Sawyer took control of the battle, started off with Elite Seed and Fire Fang, with Frogadier dubbing all of that. Trico fires off a Bullet Seed to no effect. He tries a second time to be met with a SSS combo from Frogadier, getting knocked out from the Virgil treatment. He is a storm that is approaching. <laughs> Yo, what is good with me? Their next fight, a few episodes later, Sawyer's Trico evolves into Grovile. Despite having an even playing field now, the more experienced experienced Frogadier weaves all of the leaf blades and lands a water pulse to end the match. I'll be real, losing to a type disadvantage move is a type embarrassing, but uh, moving on. Sawyer and Ash meet again a season later, and now we're talking. Skeptile versus Greninja, yes sir! Skeptile shoots out a bullet seed, Greninja counters with the water shuriken, following up with the cut through the smoke. But this ain't no Grovile, Skeptile weaves it. It's getting real, the box begins. They clash on some anime sh** and in in the middle of the battle, somebody passes by. Hmm, I wonder if I'll be talking about this guy sometime soon. Skeptile lands a Dragon Pulse after getting the first significant damage of the match. Sawyer keeps the pressure using Leaf Storm. Under any other circumstance, that's GG, but never underestimate protagonist power. Because we see the ultimate protagonist maneuver. Ash Greninja, it's done. The plot frauded out Sawyer after Skeptile gets the boss cutscene treatment. Once it's time to pack it up, they part ways. The next time we see Sawyer, he'd one up Ash by having eight gym badges to Ash's seven. Wonder if that's some foreshadowing to a potential skill issue? Not counting their second evolution battles, it's 1 0 for Greninja. Let's see if Skeptile, with more training, can overcome this beast. Round two starts. Immediately, they start throwing hands. And when that doesn't work, they use projectiles. Still nothing, it's even. Skeptile gets first hit with Leaf Flay. There goes half his HP. Ash acknowledges how strong Sawyer has gotten. This ain't Hoenn no more. He's come a long way. Greninja goes for Aerial Ace and gets a mean counter. It ain't looking good, and since Ash isn't able to activate his protagonist powers, making this an even fight, Skeptile launches Greninja into the air with a Leaf Storm and ends it with a clean Leaf Blade. It's 1-1, the set is tied. To find out who's the superior trainer, it comes down to their final league match. The stakes have never been higher for Sawyer. Pikachu starts off the battle, beating Aegislash with a Thunderbolt. Noivern and Salamence take each other out after the clash. I mean, I don't even know how that's possible because Salamence is the goat, but moving on. Gudra and Slurpuff also take each other out because the plot wants to keep things moving along. Their next Pokemon are Skeptile and Pikachu. Skeptile makes quick work of him thanks to the fatigue from the Ego Slash fight. And now for the moment we've all been waiting for. Mega Skeptile versus Greninja. Skeptile invalidates Greninja's water shuriken. Come on, bro. What do you think this is? Using water moves? Greninja tries to retaliate 
game, but Skeptile uses Frenzy Plant and Leaf Blade, staying on the offensive. Sawyer takes a moment to give us a golden motivational speech. Believe in yourself. I'm talking to you, the viewer, whoever your rival is in real life. Keep working hard, keep improving, and rush past them. Let me get a W, Sawyer, in the comments below. Ash has had enough and activates Ash Greninja. The crowd goes wild, but Sawyer said, you go win? Who decided that? And Mega evolved his Skeptile. He uses Frenzy Plant, Greninja cuts right through it. The beatdown begins. It's immaculate with Greninja landing an XXYOW square combo. Skeptile shrugs it off and goes hand for hand. Damn, this shit is crazy. It's now or never. After hitting a Leaf Storm, he uses Frenzy Plant. Greninja unlocks his inner Shinobi, using it as a pathway. Greninja then slashes through the plants and charges up his water Shiruken. He uses a double team with all of his chakra remaining, confuses the Skeptile, and tosses out that final boss ending attack. And with that, the set is over. Ash comes out the victor. You gotta keep in mind that Sawyer is fighting and taking dubs from Greninja, a Pokemon most people consider to be Ash's absolute strongest. Personally, I disagree with that. After this, you can watch my last video where I go over Ash's top six strongest Pokemon. Still, very impressive feats shown by Sawyer. Now look, the number three spot is subjective. So before you go in the comments and you start yelling at me about, oh, somebody else should have been at number three. Okay, sure, no problem. But the next two trainers are his absolute greatest and strongest. And if you disagree with me, then guess what? You are wrong. When Paul was younger, his older brother Reggie went to Kanto to challenge the pyramid head Brandon. Spectating the battle, he saw his older brother get bodied by Brandon's legendary Pokemon and their immense power. From that moment forward, Paul decided he needed to become the most powerful trainer. Throughout his journeys from the other regions, he caught his Elekid, Paul's eventual ace Pokemon. When Paul attempted to catch the Route 1 fodder, Elekid used Thunder to help bring them down. Hearing the commotion from a distance, Ash runs in to see what's up, coming face to face with one of his greatest rivals. Paul starts talking about how he views Pokemon as tools for power, conflicting with Ash's belief for his love of Mons. This naturally led to a battle. Paul's Astorly took out Ash's with an aerial ace. Ash's Apalm took down Chimchar with a focus punch. The last round, Elekid and Pikachu come face to face. Despite Pikachu being uh, tens of millions times stronger than his Elekid, the plot needed a draw and that's how the match ended. Paul took the tie on the chin and walks away, ignoring Ash. The next few episodes, Paul takes on the Rock Gym Leader Rourke. His Chimchar beat the Gym Leader's Onyx but lost to Cranidos. Something Paul took to heart. Elegant comes back into the battle and takes the dub from Rourke. When the battle ends, Paul decides to create some, uh, core memories for Chimchar, proceeding to torture, I, I mean, uh, train the Chimchar vigorously. Shortly after, Ash and Paul are forced to work together in a tournament. Halfway through the battle, Paul gives up his Chimchar during a doubles battle, forcing Ash to lead both of the Pokemon on the field. After the tournament concluded, Paul makes the biggest mistake of his life and releases the Chimchar. Thankfully, Ash was around to catch it. A season later, their next encounter comes when reaching Lake Acute. Paul's older brother tells him to have a battle. Curious to find out who's stronger. An official 6v6 matchup goes underway. Ash starts off with Weasel. Paul throws out Tartara. A little bit of a mismatch if you ask me. Ash agrees, swapping him away for Gliscor. They both damage each other heavily. Ash calls back Gliscor and uses Staraptor, now having type advantage. Paul expected this, using Stone Ash to knock it out of the Brave Bird. It's revealed all six of Paul's Pokemon and their moveset are all tailor-made to counter Ash. This dude is playing Z Zero games. He lands a couple good hits with Metal Claw until Staraptor pushes through using another Brave Bird. Paul may have the advantage, but Ash ain't backing down. Honchkrow takes on Brutal next. Ash again has type disadvantage being taken out with a Sky Attack. And starting to look grim for a protagonist, Paul calls out Magmotor, facing off Pikachu. He lands Iron Tail, but suffers a burn from contact. Weasel takes a Focus Blast from Ursaring, getting knocked out from the round. Ursaring crushes Staraptor with a Slash and Hammer on. God damn, Ash is getting worked. It doesn't help Torterra takes out Gliscor with a frenzy plant. Ursaring comes back into battle with Pikachu. After eating a Thunderbolt, it smacks the sh hey! Pikachu with Hammer Arm, knocking out Ash's ace. With five of Ash's Pokemon clipped, it's a 5v1. Let's see if Ash can activate his protagonist powers to fraud Paul out of a victory. And here we go. Ash thanks Chimchar for the dub, causing him to evolve into Monferno. Now face to face with his rival Electabuzz, it's time to get some revenge. Monferno lands a Mach Punch. Yeah, fight back you hey! 
Then landing a Flare Blitz, Ash continues to go on the offensive with Mach Punch. Electabuzz, now used to its speed, used to protect and then thunder, paralyzing Monferno. In a last ditch effort, Ash uses Mach Punch. Paul matches with a Thunder Punch. They clash. The smoke clears. Paul had Ash beat from frame one on some Azula shit. The next time they meet a few episodes later, Team Rocket steals Ash's crew's Pokemon. Electabuzz tries to save the gang, but is too weak to hold up the entire Rocket Mecha thing up. Ava unit. One. When the robot collapsed, preparing to send Electabuzz to a Lavender Town, Monferno rushes in, evolving into Infernape in the process. Bro gave Electabuzz that yeah, what's up, poop squeak look and saved the day. Off screen, Electabuzz evolved into Electfire to keep up. Now, the moment we've all been waiting for. The Sinnoh League fight. Paul first beats Berries and Polion with a Thunder Punch, advancing to the quarterfinals. They face off. The Sinnoh Champion watches from a distance. One of the most important fights in the series begins. Paul starts off with Aggron, Ash uses Pikachu. They exchange some moves, keeping pace with each other's attacks. Pikachu eats a flash cannon to the face. Ash recalls him and throws out our goat Infernape. Aggron tries to fire off another flash cannon, but is caught with a mock punch. Paul takes the first L. He takes another L when Weasel smashes Grassardon with an ice punch. Paul's next Pokemon does him justice, poisoning the Weasel and then taking him out with a pin missile. Literally two frames later, Drapion uses Toxic Spikes and Cross Poison to take out Ash's Strapter, making the fight an even 2-2. Drapion stays in to face Torterra, and as one of my buddies, Joey, says, someone needs to take the L to make Infernape look better. So after getting poisoned from the spikes and eating a pin missile, Ash loses another Pokemon. It's 2-3. Both trainers switch out their Pokemon. Paul calls in a Ninjask and Ash Infernape. To get rid of the poison spikes, Infernape digs underground and then uses Flare Blitz. Once that's taken care of, he uses Mock Punch on the Mon, though he eats a Giga Drain, further losing stamina. The next round, Pikachu takes out Frost Glass with a Volt Tackle. Ash calls him back to send out Gliscor to deal with Drapion. It dodges a Cross Poison from Drapion, taking another round by using Fire Fang. Paul has only got one Pokemon left, his Ace Electivire. Get ready for the speedrun. He traps Gliscor with his tail, then taking him out of the match with a Brick Break. Pikachu comes in for a potential W, but this ain't his story, so he's quickly dealt with with another Brick Break. Paul's Electivire steamroll through Ash's Pokemon, being practically fresh. This is bad news for Infernape, who is still poisoned and drained from his previous rounds. It doesn't matter. It can't matter. Ash can't allow Paul to continue believing his philosophy is right. Infernape cannot lose to the Pokemon who's responsible for torturing him. Everyone in the audience feels the tension. They understand it's about to go down. Even the champion is watching. They clash! Punch for punch, Infernape beams a flamethrower, Electivile protects. Then tossing out a thunder, it's quickly evaded with a dig, then countered with an uppercut. This isn't a fight, it's a chess match. Every attack is strategic. Look at them both smiling ear from ear. Infernape tries to land a mock punch, but instead gets trapped. Look at dude, you far from my trap, look at- hey. You can imagine what happens next. He lets him go. <laughs> JK. Ah! He falls. It's over. Paul was right. Pokemon should be tools. Ash is pathetic. You should subscribe to the channel. Even Team Rocket is heartbroken. The ref goes to call the match until Infernape starts moving. His eyes open. Just to see Electivire taunting him. Nanny! Then Paul calls him pathetic. Just as always. I've had enough. I've had enough! Inverted Blast! A flamethrower only seen in Legend. Electrifier tries to counter, but no, 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 no avail. Oh, no! It's time to end this. Electivire charges up an electrifying thunder punch while Infernape unlocks his inner endeavor. They clash. The clash would make Goku and Vegeta proud. Shout out to my goat Toriyama. Infernape smashes through and makes it to the west. This battle changes Paul's heart, thanking his Pokemon for the first time and appreciating Ash with a smile. He even comes back in journeys to help Ash train for the Master's 8. Look, I know, I get it. Paul is the goat. He's arguably Ash's best 
best rival, thematically speaking. One of the very few to push him to the absolute limit. It's just the number one spot would eradicate, eviscerate, and decimate Paul in a battle. And since we're counting strength into this list, Paul comes in at number two. Right before we get into his all-time strongest rival, I wanted to thank every single one of you for helping me reach a thousand subscribers. For me, it's the best accomplishment of my life, and it wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't for goats like Joey, Liminal, Edge, DDP, Hydrated, and everyone else who supports my content. Here's a little token of my appreciation. If you're enjoying, leave a like, and hey, consider subscribing to join the community. Speaking of, many of y'all have been asking for a Discord server so we can come together and build up a community. So if you go down to the pinned comment below, you can now join the official Mr. The Hawk Discord server. All right, number one. Before becoming a top eight trainer in the world, Alon was an assistant for Professor Skillamore. Being the science guy that he was, the professor and Alon took interest in megastones, wanting a better understanding of how they worked. Alon set out to a ruin for some digging, finding a megastone. Unfortunately for him, Team Flair's leader, Lysandre, happened to be there at the same time. Alon tried to battle him, but got washed by Pyroar. Seeing an opportunity for a good member, Lysander offered him a keystone and a Charizardite in exchange for working for him on the low in the name of science and, oh yes, of course, peace. This moment lit a fire in Alon to become the greatest trainer and boy does he succeed from what you're about to see. Let's go over his most notable moments. First, Alon beats Remo's Mega Garchomp. Yes, we're starting off rip with pseudo legendaries. After exchanging Dragon Claws, Charizard comes out on top. Next up, Alon challenges a little known guy, uh, the late champion of Hoenn, Steven Stone. Charizard blasts a flamethrower that's deflected with Psychic. Metagross, my goat, mega evolves, understanding this won't be an easy fight. Charizard tanks a flash cannon, then gets close up for a Dragon Claw. Metagross eats it, because he is that guy. Returning the favor with a Meteor Mash. Bro is not going down yet. They attempt to settle the match with a Clash, but Lysander intervenes, making the match an unofficial draw. Just understand, this is Hoenn's champion, using a Mega Metagross that Alon drew with. The next feat Alon displays, well, that should pretty much seal the deal for him being number one. Steven, Alon, and Lysander make their way to a little pillar in the sky, finding the meteor that's the source of mega evolution. When analyzing the stone, Ray hey. Quaza comes down from the heavens, and if they thought that was an issue, Ray Quaza mega evolves. Houston, we have a problem. Big Ray blows up the operation with a dragon pulse. Charizard and Metagross come out. Charizard makes the first move with Flamethrower. Ray weaves it, smacking CX in the face. After hitting them both again, Big Ray ends the shenanigans with a Draco Meteor. Things get even worse. While they were analyzing the stone, it woke up Kyogre and Groudon in the process. So after fighting Mega Ray, Alon now has to take on a primal Rivision Kyogre and Groudon. CX uses Flamethrower against Groudon, which is uh, quite brave. Groudon goes on the offensive. CX Ultra Instincts and Rocks, then uses Dragon Claw, following up with a Steel Wing. Despite tying with Steven and losing to legendary Pokemon, uh, I mean, no, I'm sorry, the legendary Pokemon, these battles are the plot telling us that Alon is a Omega level trainer. You think Paul, Sawyer, or Gary would be out here breathing the same air as the Hoenn's legendary trio? Right before we could talk about his battle with Ash, we must go over his last ridiculous feat, beating 10 Mega evolved Pokemon in a row. Mega Venusaur was his first victim, then Mega versions of Alakazam, Scizor, Ampharos, Agron, Heracross, and and then, an Elite Four's Houndoom. Extremely fatigued, CX won by the skin of its teeth after taking a beating and landing Blast Burn. Running the entire gauntlet, this dude is practically unstoppable. Now, if you remember from earlier, Alon met Ash after coming across his battle with Sawyer. Impressed by Greninja's ability to transform without a Megastone, their first battle took place in a meeting of two journeys. A 1v1 on Rust between Charizard and Greninja. Ash leads off with the Water Shuriken that Charizard slashes through. After a bit of foreplay, CX comes out. Greninja double teams and aerial aces but gets caught with a thunder punch. He lands another thunder punch with Greninja biting the dust. It's looking grim until Ash's protagonist powers activate with Ash Greninja awakening. Finally landing a move aerial ace rocks CX. They clash with CX overpowering the ultimate protagonist transformation. Then taking the dub with a blast burn. Keep in mind this is the same Greninja that almost beat the Kalos champion Ziantha before Ash got frauded out of that victory. Losing to a type disadvantaged Pokemon in Charizard X. Before their final league battle, they have a rematch that Ash almost wins, but Clamps is the same way he did with Diantha after the battle. Technically, it should be 1-1, but the plot kept it 1-0. Ash gets his opportunity to sell the score in the Kalos League. Believe it or not, Alon has more Pokemon than Charizard.
Stars are in it, and they're just as scary. He starts off with Tyranitar, with Ash starting with Pikachu. Titar grabs Pikachu with a crunch, tossing the Mon into the sky. Using the momentum, Pikachu blasts out an Electro Ball, taking the first round. Weavile takes out Noivering with a Night Slash. Halucha returns the loss to Alon's Weevil with a Mind Press. Bisharp Uno reverses with the Guillotine, knocking out the Halucha. Unpheasant and Talonflame take each other out. Alon sends out Metagross to face Ash's Pikachu. Can we take a moment to appreciate this man's roster? Titar, Metagross, and Charizard bro is actually the final boss. Pikachu lobotomizes Metagross with Thunder. Gudra, the trash can of pseudo legendaries, is beaten by another guillotine from Bisharp. Greninja takes out Bisharp with a double water shuriken. And now it's time for the main event. Charizard versus Greninja. Greninja lands the first blow by dodging Flamethrower, following up with Cut. They both decide not to waste any time and go into their final form. Greninja uses double team, hoping for an advantage. Charizard burns through them all with Flamethrower, opening up an opportunity for a water shuriken that Charizard neutralizes with a Dragon Claw. They start matching Aerial Ace for Dragon Claw. Unfortunately for Ash, CX found the opening. After a few more exchanges, they put it all on the line with a final attack. The cinematic cutscene starts with Greninja's cut and CX's Dragon Claw. They continue to exchange blows. Damn, this is hype! Greninja blocks the Thunder Punch with Water Shuriken and tosses that hey. at Charizard. Damn, who got that? The smoke clears and Charizard is left standing. Alon is the new champion. As you can see, based off feats, Elaine is clearly the strongest. Dare I say greatest. It's no competition. Though, if you want to find out who are Ash's top six strongest Pokemon, then make sure you check out my last video where I go over exactly that. And right after, the one where I go over the top three best legendary Pokemon of all time.